Hello, was we're here back with another video and today we are going to be looking at a 1 to 99 guide for mining. This skill was revolutionized in January of 2019 with the mining and smithing rework. Because of this I wanted to take some time to go over the mechanics and help people understand just how you can maximize the damage done to a rock. If you want to skip this part, feel free to go on the timestamp on the screen where I go into the useful items and then the locations to mine. The biggest change for mining is that instead of each rock only having one ore and then it needing to respawn, it now has infinite ore but you don't get a rock on every swing. Instead with each swing you deal damage to the rock and once you've depleted their HP pool you will get an ore and keep mining away. The amount of damage you've done is based on your mining level, your strength level, and your pickaxe. There also exists a hardness mechanic where if you're using a lower level pickaxe than the ore you are mining, say a bronze pickaxe on light animica, you will get heavily reduced damage. The whole damage formula is best shown in example and let's use the following. We are mining a level 50 rune rock. We are level 55 mining and 50 strength. We are using a rune pickaxe plus three, which has a damage roll between 28 and 78. Let's substitute everything into the formula. We get 55 plus five plus 28 to 78 plus zero because we're using a high enough pickaxe so the hardness mechanic doesn't come into consideration and plus zero because I'm going to ignore the crit chances for now which is 88 to 138 damage per non-critical swing or 113 on average. For critical swings the amount it adds is based on the level but for level 55 it's 60% extra. The chance of getting a critical is also dependent on your mining level and the rock you are mining and for 55 mining at rune rocks it's 5%. That means that 95% of the time the average will be 113 and 5% of the time the average will be 180.8 and when you average those two items together you get 116.4 average damage. The XP you gain is on each swing and it's based on the damage you do and the difficulty of mining the rock with higher level rocks giving more XP per damage. For rune ore, the multiplier is 0.765, and when our average damage is put through the formula, that's 116.4 times 0.76 times 0.4 equals 35.4 XP per swing, and with 1500 swings an hour, that's about 53k XP per hour. Another mechanic of the mining and smithing rework is stamina. Stamina is the game's way of punishing you for AFKing too hard, and is represented by a blue and yellow bar above your head. This mechanic is unlocked at 15 mining and you get the first 14 levels without having to worry about it. Every swing depletes 10 stamina from your, your stamina pool and it's replenished by clicking on the rock again. Your stamina pool is based on both your mining level and your agility level. The table on screen shows your base stamina with your mining level, however your agility level comes into play with each agility level giving one extra stamina, meaning that every 10 agility levels you essentially gain another hit before your stamina runs out. In terms of how it affects your damage, when at 100% stamina you deal 100% damage, but at 1 to 99% stamina you deal 90% damage, and then it falls off a meteorotic cliff with only dealing 20% damage at zero stamina. As a rule of thumb, as long as you aren't at zero you should be fine, just click the rock every once in a while to replenish your pool. Rock opportunities are the last thing to talk about. Uh, they are another way of rewarding the player for paying attention. One of the rocks you aren't mining will glow yellow and if clicked on it, it will give you a multiplier on damage for that swing. The multiplier amount and damage is based on your mining level and the rock you are mining. Again, the table is on screen. They are worth clicking on if you notice them, but not worth stressing over. One spawns every 35 seconds. Now for the fun part of the video, the useful items section. These sections are always long because we've had about 20 years of additions of content to the mining skill and you can use all those things together. Let's start with the tools. There are a total of 40 pickaxes to choose from, but the simplest answer is always go with the highest level one. So at level 50 mining, you'd use rune pickaxe plus three. Once you get to level 60 mining, it's best to use the augmented pickaxes, which are dragon at level 60, crystal at level 70, imkondo at level 80, and the earth and song at level 90. With augments, you are able to attach two tool gizmos to your pickaxe. The ideal combination is hone six and furnace four plus fortune three. Hone six gives you a 12% chance of getting double ore. Furnace four will give you a 20% chance of dealing no damage to the rock but gaining double experience instead for that swing. And Fortune 3 gives you a 1.5% chance of doubling your ore and banking it immediately. There are other perks, but they don't do much for mining. Furnace 4 though is an absolute must have because it's essentially a 20% chance to gain double experience on each swing. 
Let's move on to the outfits. There are three outfits that you can use, but we're gonna ignore the Star Fury outfit. That leaves us with the Golden Mining Suit. And there are five pieces, each giving 1% bonus experience. When the full outfit is worn, a further 1% for a total of 6% bonus experience is given. This outfit is obtained by spawning the Golden Nymph, which requires 65,000 damage to be dealt to the crust in the mine. Each spawn of the Nymph grants one piece that is unowned. There's also the Varric Armor from the Varric Task Set, giving a chance to get a second ore and full experience. The percentage chance is based on the tier of the armor, and the armor give the rewards for its tier and anything below it. So the Varric Armor 2 would give the bonuses that 2 and 1 give. Completing the new Varric Task Set gives you double the activation chance. If you own both this and the Golden Mining Suit, you can wear the Golden Mining Top, and it will still provide both effects. The Magic Golem Outfit, which is the elite skilling outfit that can be won on Treasure Hunter or obtained in-game by mining. Each outfit piece costs 3600 fragments to make and you start gaining fragments at level 70 mining, and once you're level 80 mining you're able to craft those pieces. There are 15 pieces in total, if all 15 pieces are owned you gain the following benefits. 5% increased critical hit chance, 6% BXP if you happen to own the Golden Mining Outfit, the double ore chance from the Varric Armor works regardless on whether you're wielding the Varric Armor or not. Your Rock Rotunity Multiplier is increased by 1, so if it was 4 times before, it would now go to 5 times. And then finally, monsters in the Living Rock Caverns are unaggressive to you. For the Elite Skilling Outfits, the Mining one is pretty weak in comparison, but it still provides some benefit, so it's something worth going for. Continuing on with the items you can wear, we have the Mining Cape. It gives you a 5% chance of receiving double ore when mining a core rock. A core rock is any rock that is used in smithing, so a Leia Sea Salt is not a core rock. When the effect procs, you gain bonus XP equal to the level required to mine that rock, so a doubled light Animica would be 60 BXP gained. There are a total of 5 summoning familiars that you can use, and the amount of damage they provide extra per swing is shown on a table. The best one is the Ancient Familiar for Gargoyles, as it provides 12 damage per swing. Its special move scroll costs about 2.5k each to use, and while it does provide more damage and therefore more XP, it's not worth using. If you want to be cheap, you can use a Lava Titan and save the 30k GP per hour. Urns are a little special with mining because they give way less experience than the other urns, but still take just as long to craft, so their GP per XP can get quite high in comparison. Currently, the GP per XP for them is 5.67, which isn't a lot, but if you're pinching pennies, you can skip them. I would advise that if you have the ability to make 2 mil per hour, to just pony up the GP and buy those urns. The Urn Enhancer, which is a reward from Nomad's Elegy, increases the XP that you get from teleporting urns to 25% of what was stored. For decorating mining urns, that makes the teleportation give 781 XP instead of 625 XP, and each teleportation costs 400 GP in Divine Charges. So if the urn is worth using, then so is the Enhancer. To store these urns, you can use the Brooch of the Gods, which can store up to 1,000 decorated urns, and while mining, it has a buff that the Rock Rotunity Multiplier is increased by 1, much like the Magic Golem outfit. You can also get Divine Blessings while mining, which can give uncommon or rare invention components. Skill Chompas are very good for mining, and this is because you don't actually lose a Skill Chompa on every single mine, instead you only lose one when you get a critical hit, which happens between 5-20% to of the time. When it goes off, you gain extra damage, up to 70 if you're using crystal ones. Skill Chompas can really help you speed through the early levels, and you are only going to use a couple hundred an hour because it only uses on criticals. The ore box is able to store metal ores, and once fully upgraded, it can store 140 of each ore. The ore it can store is dependent on its tier, for example, the Mithril ore box can store any ore up till Mithril. If you fill the ore box by using the action bar instead of clicking on it, it won't interrupt your mining. This is just kind of a pro tip for everything in RuneScape. If you can use the action bar and you don't want to interrupt your action, do that instead of clicking on it in your inventory, it's just that much better. Grace of the Elves can be used to store porters inside it. This means that you can get 500 additional ore in one slot without having to bank, and the less time spent banking, the more time you are mining. On top of that, they are able to spawn Saren Spirits while training mining, which gives drops on the rare drop table. And if a Luck of the Dwarves is equipped, then it could even be a Hazelmere Signet Ring. One of the most important things to learn in this video is the Juju plus Stone Spirit combination. When you are under the effects of a perfect juju mining potion, when a stone spirit is used, it restores your stamina bar. That means if you are able to mine an ore fast enough, 
i.e. before your stamina bar depletes, then you can 100% AFK mine without having to worry about your stamina at all. This combo should be used whenever possible. So if you're an Iron Man, as soon as you get the perfect potions, or if you're a main, just buy a perfect juju mining potion from the GE. We've gone through most of the big items, but let's just rapid fire through the rest. The Asiatops perk from Range Out of Time gives a 6% increase to critical hit chance while mining, which increases XP per hour. The Simitox perk from Range Out of Time increases the chance to find a geode by 2% while mining. This is good if you're going for metamorphic geodes for Golden Rock. The Relic Power Inspire effort gives a 2% increase to experience gained in gathering skills, which mining is, so you can swap that over if you're going to be doing a lot of mining. The Pontifex Observation Ring, a reward from Azanandra's quest, reduces the spawn rate of rock opportunities from 35 seconds to 25 seconds. The Ring of Whispers, a reward from Sliske's Endgame, gives plus 3 mining damage per hit. Torstal Incense Sticks can be used to gain plus 2% base experience in all skills, and mining is a skill. Dwarfweed Incense Sticks can be used to teleport ores to the bank without using a Porter Charge and has an 8% activation chance at max potency. Barbarian Assault can get you massive amounts of mining bonus experience, way more than you can get by training the skill, so it's hella efficient to do the Barbarian Assault minigame for bonus experience. Before we get into the actual methods, I promise there's only one last thing and that is quests. There are a variety of quests that can be completed without having to train the skill. If you do the Dig Site Quest, Plague City, and the Lost Tribe, you can get yourself up to level 32 mining without mining a single rock. This really helps out in skipping the early levels where the XP rate is considerably lower. And the 10k XP you'll gain from those quests is way more valuable now than later when you're at like 40 or 50 mining. For the XP rates, I used the wiki calculator, which is in the description. I used it under semi-AFK mode with 99 strength and using urns. Other bonuses and outfits were not included, but that would increase the XP rates that are shown in this video, but I wanted to give you more of a low ball than a high ball. I also put 99 strength in because everyone's going to have varied strength levels and just a blanket 99 works for the calculations. We're starting off where mining should start off, and that's the copper and tin rocks. The most convenient location is at the Berthort Mine, as it's a very short trip to a furnace to deposit your ores. You're going to stay here all the way up to level 12. Make sure to pick up an iron pickaxe at level 10 to maximize XP per hour. The XP rate varies between 6.5k XP per hour to 14.1k XP per hour. At level 12, you're going to swap over to iron ore. This is the point at which you gain the 10% critical chance on iron ore and the XP per hour is more on iron than copper or tin. This is a theme that we're going to see throughout this, where it's not necessarily best to swap as soon as you unlock the new ore, but once you get the first upgrade on that new ore. The Dwarven Iron Mine, which is located underneath Falador, is relatively close to a bank, so you can just pop up the stairs and mosey over onto the Falador East Bank to deposit your ores once your ore box is filled. You will stay here until level 21 mining. The XP rate varies between 14.4k to 22.6k XP per hour. At level 21 mining, you have multiple options to go for, silver, coal, or uncommon gem rocks. The XP per hour is similar for all of them, but they all have their pros and cons. Uncommon gem rocks require the gem bag from Dunge to be able to mine effectively, though they give the most GP per hour. Coal ore makes about half of that money but some of the bonuses like the Varric armor would affect coal but not the gem rocks giving it slightly more xp per hour and silver is less gp per hour than coal but you also get less ore per hour so that makes it more afk and longer time between banking trips so you're spending more time mining if you only care about mining xp i would do silver the best place to mine that is the crafting guild as there is a furnace to deposit your ores right nearby inside the guild. You need 40 crafting and a brown apron to enter the crafting guild. You're gonna stay here until level 30 where you unlock mithril ore. The XP ranges from 23.1 to 27K XP per hour. At level 30 mining, we are moving on to mithril ores. There are a lot of locations to mine mithril ore, but the most convenient is the Verox Southwest mine. Once you get a full ore box or are out of porters, just run and surge up to the Verox West Bank. Adamant ore becomes the best ore to mine for XP at level 45 mining, so we'll be here for quite a while with the XP rates ranging between 33.8k and 48.1k XP per hour. At level 45 mining, we are moving on to Adamant or Luminite ore, and the most convenient location to mine Addy ore is in the Remington mine. Port Serum has an anvil so you can deposit all of the ores there into the ore bank. Both Adamant and Lumite Ore give the same XP per hour in mining, but Lumite gives you more GP per hour at the cost of quicker trips and more porters used. 
Again, if you only care about mining XP, do adamant ore. You'll stay here until level 56 mining. The XP per hour varies between 48.6k XP per hour and 60.2k XP per hour. At level 56 mining, we're going to start mining Rune, once the best ore in the game, but now a mid-level rock. You can eventually mine Rune in the Mining Guild once you hit level 60 mining, but until then you can use the Fight Arena Mine. It's located southeast of the Fight Arena, right by Port Cazard, and there is an anvil in Port Cazard where you can deposit your full ore box and inventory. You will stay here until 64 mining, at which Dracolith and Orichalcite become better than Rune. The XP rate for this band is 72.1 to 82.8k XP per hour. There was a large jump at level 60 as we now had access to augmented tools with the dragon pickaxe. From now on we're going to assume that you're using an augmented pickaxe with Hone 6 and Furnace 4 for XP per hour calculations. Iron Men will experience lower XP per hour as they won't have access to invention yet as they need to have 80 smithing and to get your smithing up you need to get your mining up. At level 64 mining we are mining Dracolith or Orichalcite, both of which can be found in the mining guild under Falador. Both give the same ore per hour, so there are basically just reskinned versions of each other. You're going to be staying at the, this location until 75 mining. This is because the augmented T70 pickaxe requires access to Prif Dinas, and that requires 75 mining to get. The XP rate goes from 85.5k to 92.0k XP per hour. It should be noted that if you don't have good ranks of Honed and Furnace, then you aren't going to get a lot out of using an augmented T60 pickaxe over an unaugmented T70 pickaxe. And you have an alternate option of doing concentrated coal from level 70 to 75 with a Necronium pickaxe plus 4, with the XP rate going between 83.1 to 85.5k XP per hour. With Prif unlocked and the Crystal pickaxe obtained, it's now the time to go to concentrated coal. Necrate and Phasmite offer similar XP per hour, but concentrated coal is more effective with the Juju Potion and the Stone Spirit combination. Concentrated coal is found under Falador in the Dwarven Mine. It's a little inconvenient bank-wise, but trips are fairly long with the Grace of the Elves. With the Crystal Pickaxe in hand, you can mine all the way up to level 81, with the XP per hour being between 102 to 111k. At level 80, you're going to want to get the Imkando Pickaxe. This is the T80 Augmented Pickaxe and one of the components in the T90 Pickaxe. You need four pieces of the Imkando pickaxe and they are found by killing lava geysers in the lava flow mine. The best way to do this is to hop between worlds at the lava flow mine looking for already spawned geysers and kill them with water spells. It takes about 15 minutes to get the four pieces and the pickaxe. With the Imkando pickaxe obtained we can mine bane ore as we have the 10% critical chance as with most high level ores, there isn't a real convenient location, but the Azure hunting area is the only non-quest lock location that isn't in the wilderness. It's quite a way north from the Fronek Lodestone, but if you travel far enough, you will get there. This will be your home until level 89 mining. The XP rate varies between 114 to 119k XP per hour. At level 89, XP really takes off, and that's all because of Saren Stones. They are not a core rock, so they don't get a thing like rock opportunities, criticals, or stamina, but instead they get a 1.2 times experience boost. This makes Saren Stones immediately the best thing and a perfectly viable option all the way to 99. The XP ranges from 191k XP per hour at level 89 all the way up to 212k XP per hour at level 99. There are our two main stopping points off that you can do and we'll cover them. But make sure that when you get to level 90, combine your Crystal Pickaxe and your Imkando Pickaxe into the Pickaxe of Earth and Song. This makes it a T90 Pickaxe and also augmentable. At level 91, you unlock the 10% critical chance for Light and Dark Animica, meaning you can get a bit more XP and ore at the Light Animica. And if you want to make money going for 99, then you can do it this way. Though the XP rate suffers pretty heavily, getting about 60% of the XP per hour that you would otherwise get at Saren Stones. The most convenient location for Light Animica is Tier 1, as it's just a couple steps northeast of the Lodestone and past a rake. At level 97, you unlock Aaliyah Crablets. These are the best XP per hour for mining in the game, though they require you finding them on Uncharted Islands. While mining them, you can get around 260k XP per hour, which is about 25% more than what you would get at Saren Stones at that same level. Having a flagged island with a couple Crablet spawns means you can spend an hour a day there and slowly work on your 99, 120, or 200 mil mining goal. That's what I did, and I eventually got to 200 mil. For the 99, 
139 to 120 portion of mining, you want to do the same thing that you did to end off 99. If you want to make money, go back to late Animica. That will be a lot slower than the other methods, but you'll get a lot of GP by the end of it. Are you too lazy to look for uncharted islands that have Alea Crablets? Go ahead and mine Sarin Stones. The XP per hour is still pretty great there. Or if you have an island flagged with three Alea Crablets and can slowly work on it daily, then go for it that way. Any one of those three options are more than viable for training mining up to 120. I hope you enjoyed the video. That was my return to 1 to 99 guides, and I hope I covered everything that you could want with this skill. If you have anything I missed, please leave a comment down below. I do appreciate it. Past that, have a good day, and I'll catch you on the next one.